hello YouTube. Uh, so Gary left me a wonderful response, and it made me happy because I like talking to Gary. Um, <coughs> and there's one particular issue that I want to talk about a little bit, elaborate on a little bit further, uh, because I don't think he, he quite understood the, the criticism that I was making of him. Um, actually, it wasn't really a criticism that I was making of him, but um, th I don't think he quite understood the worry that I have. Uh, first of all, I want to point out that I never called him a positivist, right? There's one moment in his video where he looks into the camera and says, don't say that I'm a positivist. Maybe that was a preemptive strike. Um, and I do think that this is, this is uh, interesting in that there was an earlier uh, uh, version of that video where I mentioned um, the, the conflicts between the Frankfurt School and uh, the quote-unquote positivists, right? People like Karl Popper. Um, and that, that dispute is really interesting, and I think it's particularly germane to this conversation in many ways. Uh, and I hope that, that we can actually start to, to dig into some of those issues. Um, because like all philosophical disputes, I think that, well not all, but I think that you have a, a bunch of very, very intelligent people making very, very good points. Um, and uh, that's true about Karl Popper, that's also true about people from the Frankfurt School, and even if you don't agree with their points, they're, it's always interesting to see how they got something wrong, right? So there's a, there's a sort of... Uh, so I guess there is there is a level at which this conversation between Gary and I might be viewed viewed as a kind of um, reenactment of some elements of that because I definitely consider myself I definitely consider the Frankfurt School to be a, a, a topic of interest to me um, and a formative influence on on my thinking in many ways. Um, so that's fun. Now. Specifically, what I want to talk about is is the question of of uh, the worry about naturalizing power relations because I don't think that I said or implied that uh, that if Gary is left to his own devices, he would he would turn into a Nazi or a phrenologist. I don't. I think that that's a bit of a straw man. Um, rather, the claim that that I was making is that the way power tends to justify itself is through recourse to nature or if not nature might be a, a specific term that might be um, difficult here so let's just say the order of things in the world something like that uh, because for instance something like the divine right of kings is is a way of appealing to the the order of the world uh, to justify a power relation, right? Um, that's that's quite clear. Uh, I am not, I as the king am not dominating the peasantry because uh, because of my own whims. I'm doing it because uh, I am licensed to do so because it is uh, inscribed into into the order of the universe somehow, right? Uh, you see these kinds of gestures made in all over the world and in all sorts of different time periods. Um, now, so that's, that's another example of, of the way in which the recourse to nature, I mean, I, nowadays, this is why I'm, I'm worried about this, because nowadays we would tend to consider God as something supernatural, right? So I'm worried about using the word nature here. But an appeal to the order of things, uh, uh, justifies justifies power relations. Now, the reason I bring up phrenology and and, and uh, eugenics is is not because I think that uh, the project of analyzing social questions necessarily leads to ridiculous things like that. That's that's not the issue. Uh, uh, the issue is something more like. Uh, any leveraging of power historically usually finds recourse to nature, particularly human nature in, in one way or another. 
um, the question of human nature is probably one of the central political questions ever articulated. Um, if, like Hobbes, you believe that we are rapacious uh, creatures um, who left your own, our own devices, it will be all, all against all in the state of nature, etc., then you may conclude that we need strong state institutions to curb those, those impulses. If, on the other hand, you believe that human beings are basically good and productive, uh, then it will follow that state institutions are um, arbitrarily limiting, uh, as is the case in, in much of the anarchist literature. Someone like Bakunin would, would say this. Um, so uh, your position on human nature is, is going to inform your politics, or maybe vice versa. Either way, they're going to be sort of mutually implicit. Whatever politics someone affirms tends to follow from some concept of what the human is. Um, now, again, this is, this is an appeal to nature to justify power relations, right? Um, if you look at... I saw someone in his comments section mentioned people like race realists, or uh, you could also look at certain MRAs, right, who, who attempt to justify certain patriarchal exercises of power or racial exercises of power uh, through recourse to, to nature as well, right? And it's not, it's not a coincidence that all of, all of these, uh, these sort of schools of thought uh, are embedded with some concept of human nature. That's, that's not, it's just not a coincidence. That's something that's, that's, that's a necessary linchpin in an, most arguments that involve uh, uh, attempting to justify forms of domination. Um, so the, the, this is why the appeal to nature is dangerous, right? Um, uh, because the appeal to nature, or the attempt to take some social relation and to naturalize it, saying, for instance, as, as some people would make the argument that once a society gets to any sufficient level of complexity, uh, capitalism is, is necessarily the way to, to organize that society. Um, in some way, this is, this is similar to a, appeal to nature, or maybe it's better to refer to that as, appeal to, as an appeal to necessity, right, for a certain kind of social organization. Um, I reject this claim. Um, so how we tend to justify our social arrangements tends to take the form of some some appeal to necessity or nature in one way or another this is this is this is where a lot of the suspicion comes from uh, now if you couple that with the fact that that I'm sure that I uh, embody all sorts of um, implicit and tacit support for forms of injustice that I'm not even aware of. Um, I take that claim to just be a fallibilist stance, right, a political fallibilism, right? Uh, uh, we as human beings are biased in ways that are, that are deeply disturbing, right? Um, and the, the, the problem with that is that these are, these are invisible to us, right? It may be the case that for me to make a, a power gesture, um, or I may, may make all sorts of power gestures against people uh, without really recognizing that I'm doing that or, or knowing that I'm doing that. Um, I'm sure I'm sure Gary will admit that that level of fallibilism. I'm sure that he will admit that at some level uh, he might well be, again, either implicitly or tacitly uh, enacting um, forms of injustice without realizing it, right? Again, just due to the nature of human bias. Uh, now, if you couple that with... Uh, with the fact that the appeal to na nature is a license 
for power um, than if we take on a uh, if we take on the project of trying to ground social arrangements in terms of nature then it seems that we will very likely uh, end up naturalizing or, or viewing as necessary um, uh, certain social arrangements that are actually contingent, that are actually transformable, that are actually changeable, um, uh, that are also unjust. Um, and again, with potentially with the best of intentions, right? Um, uh, there's a, a long history of social philosophers calling each other fascists uh, or proto-fascists or you know, all, the, all these different words, all these different ways of accusing each other of being authoritarian. And I think there are, uh, you know, sometimes those kinds of claims can be substantiated. Um, but I don't think that anybody sets out to be an authoritarian, at least not anymore. Uh, I don't think an MRA uh, recognizes that his that certain of the things that he's claiming are natural uh, are actually contingent and actually repressive to a a portion of the population. Right? I don't think that they realize that in the first person. Um, so again. While it may be the case that we can, uh, that there is such a thing as a good science or a, a good way to explain social phenomena in natural terms, again, the reason, what I think warrants uh, an extreme level of suspicion is, is, the, is those dual concerns. The relationship between the appeal to nature and power, first on the one hand, and also the nature of human bias on the other. Have a good day.